Continuing on with covalent bonding, we were talking about nonpolar covalent bonding and we went over single and double. Um, and uh, so we want to go over what a polar covalent bond is. So it's, it's still a sharing of electrons. Um, so let's look at, at ammonia. So NH3 is the, um, is the formula for that. That is one nitrogen and three hydrogens together. Nitrogen, remember, is plus seven. So looking at this closer, we have two electrons in the first energy level. And then we're gonna end up having five electrons in the valence shell. So we have two that are paired and then three single ones. So that gives um, nitrogen the ability to bond to three hydrogens. And in this case, it's gonna be covalently shared with the single electrons that are in the hydrogen outer shell. What happens in this case though, because nitrogen is so much larger than three hydrogens, so in other words, plus seven versus plus three, um, that means that the nitrogens are gonna be pulling the electrons from hydrogen into the orbits with their uh, electrons um, more often than the hydrogens are pulling the electrons from nitrogen into theirs, all right? So what that means is the electrons are spending more time around the nitrogen with, paired up in their orbitals. So that gives this side of the molecule a slight negative charge. It's not a full charge, it's not like an ion, but it's enough of a negative charge that it gives the molecule some special properties, which we will talk about in a sec. And this side is, uh, the hydrogen side is slightly positively charged. Normally, in configuration, the molecule actually looks like a little tripod. I didn't draw it very well here, but this is like a, like a little, um, a single thing stuck on top of like a little pyramid, so to speak, where the hydrogens are making the base of the pyramid and the nitrogen is making the top part. And nitrogen is slightly negatively charged and the bottom part is slightly positively charged. This is what we say is nitrogen is more electronegative, which means it pulls the electrons more and therefore it makes um, it slightly more negative on that side of the molecule. Water is another example of, of this, of a polar covalent bond, H2O. We have oxygen. Remember, oxygen has two electrons in the first energy level, and then it's going to have six in the next shell, two that are paired and two that are unpaired. These valence will join with the hydrogens in a regular covalent bond, but because oxygen is so much larger than the two hydrogens, what's gonna happen is this is slightly negatively charged over here because the electrons spend more time on this side than they do on this side. So again, a polar covalent bond. All right, now what that's gonna do, these polar covalent bonds form uh, atoms, or I'm sorry, molecules or structures that are then can be attracted to each other via something called a hydrogen bond. So in the case of water, um, we, I drew water out here more, uh, more exacting, but in the case of water, remember slightly negative, slightly positive. If it's attracted to another water, this is just a, um, a shorthand for that, oxygen and the hydrogens. If it's attracted to another water, this is the negative end, this is the positive end, and it's gonna be attracted to the, po uh, the negative end is gonna be attracted to the positive end of this one. That forms a hydrogen bond. This one is the po is this positive side, this is the negative side, gonna be attracted to the positive end, forming a hydrogen bond. So hydrogen bonding usually involves hydrogen um, of some molecule because that is what's gonna form those polar molecules to begin with that are then gonna be attracted to each other. Um, this makes them very cohesive, meaning like substances attracted to each other. Water tends to glom onto other waters, so to speak. Same thing would happen with nitrogen, or I'm sorry, with ammonia, all right? Um, all right, the last type of bonding is called van der Waals forces. Um, we're not really gonna talk about this very much, but I just wanted to mention it. It's an attraction due to proximity. Um, chameleon feet uh, attraction for the walls, like it's just because it's like an instantaneous attraction. When the foot comes in contact with the wall, it allows them to move up the wall, um, but it can break easily. It doesn't, it, there's no measurable force, so to speak. There's no charges involved. 
um, or at least not easily measured. 